Good evening for the 38 Berlin Real Estate Talk. Um, today our topic is renting in Berlin, in Germany. What's happening in the year 2022? Our expert is my colleague and director of Black Label Property Management here in Berlin, Germany, Mr. Janis Zakres. Janis, nice to have you here. Hi, Akin. Happy to be here. So hello uh, everybody, thanks for uh, listening 35 minutes to the English part, uh, sorry, to the German part. We're now moving on to the English section yep. with our CEO, Mr. Janis Sackes. He is setting up our letting and management company called Black Level Property Management. Janis, thank you for investing some time this Tuesday evening. Thank you for having me. Uh, Janis, it's the third time you are uh, the expert in this uh, 38th Berlin Real Estate Talk. Yes, that's true. In our new studio here in Berlin West End in Rustanallee. So everything is new. I hope the sound is better than the one you've seen before. It's a, if it's the first time you are joining one of our um, Zoom calls, please be aware of it. We can't hear you, but we, of course, you can ask questions in our chat. And uh, we also cannot see you. This uh, webinar or this um, Berlin Real Estate Talk is being recorded and you can uh, watch it on YouTube next week. And uh, if you have any questions, please also uh, feel free to contact us anytime. Janis, you speak uh, fluent English. And uh, yeah, we're going to cover a lot of your questions. You've sent us a lot of questions beforehand. And uh, first of all, Janis, I just would like to start. Um, how many people are now working for Black Label Property uh, Management? So we are currently eight people working for uh, Black Label Property Management. And we will be nine in a couple of weeks' time and ten starting next year. Okay. How many apartments or how many units are you managing at the moment? At the moment, we manage almost 1,000 units and um, we hope and we see that it will be a lot more uh, next year. Yeah, okay. Um, how long are you now doing this job, Janis? I started uh, by Black Label end of 2017, so we're five years now, okay. I would say. Yes. And yeah, we started very low like 25 units, I think. Now we're in 1,000 and it's getting bigger. Yeah. What, what, what are your clients? Mostly international uh, investors, um, normal people who bought an apartment and uh, yeah, try to make a living out of it. Okay. I would say. Um, and so we have, I think in the past few years, especially this year, a lot of things have changed on the German property market. What are, from, from, from your perspective, what are the main changes you have seen this year compared to last year? Um, the political situation we have, uh, we're experiencing the whole year now, changed quite a lot of things. Uh, there were a lot of people coming into us, having um, problems with their property, trying to find um, help to, to let them out or um, to find new tenants. Um, there were a lot of changes in the plans of a lot of landlords who decided to sell their properties uh, through the year for many reasons. Uh, I would say it was a very interesting year. Okay, uh, so what, what happens to the rent rental average? Did it go up? Did it stay stable? Did it change? So mainly it went up. We didn't expect that. When we started the year, we expected to 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 be more uh, the market to be more s uh, stable, mm -hmm. but um, again, the political situation changed everything through the year, mm -hmm. and um, we see the the rents going going up, uh, although we didn't expect that. So. Okay, well, just to give you uh, to give our um, um, listeners just a, a feeling. Or what kind of rent people have to pay in Berlin to find an apartment? Um, I mean, mainly we see uh, higher prices in new builds, small apartments. Um, we we rent out micro apartments, for example, right now for 30 euros per square meter. That's net rent. Um, where last year, for example, the price for the, sim uh, the same apartment was I would say 25, 26 euros per square meter. Um, yeah, basically that's 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 the the main the main thing we saw there. Uh, for old buildings, things are more stable because there are laws that dictate the price the pri uh, dictate the prices. 
Um, but yeah, it was it, it was a good tier. Okay, okay. Um, so, what are the big things you would uh, give uh, uh, landlords or future landlords in Berlin as a as a tip? What what should they be aware of? Um, they should be well informed. They can get a lot inform of information in our website, and they can contact us anytime. Uh, we can give them our opinion, and depending on the the property they have, or if they are um, they're willing to buy something, we can also give them tips there. Every property is different, so we need to to be more specific on that. Uh, get good advice from lawyers and tax advisors about their rights and what they can do and what they cannot do. And Yeah, basically these two things are the most important and we are here to give them, give them solutions and help them uh, have the proper decision for them. Okay, so you have sent us a couple of questions uh, beforehand and uh, you're now going through your questions um, just to, to make sure that we're covering all of that. So uh, people are asking us if I would like to cancel a rental lease because I want to sell the apartment. Um, how, how easy is this, Dennis? <laughs> how easy it is? Well, this is a legal question. I yeah. cannot um, answer it from the legal perspective. What I can say is that um, this is something that can be done. Uh, we always advise our landlords to take legal advice mm -hmm. from a lawyer mm -hmm. uh, and let a lawyer do that because it needs to be done properly. Uh, there are no rooms for mistake there. Uh, in generally, can be done. They need to be aware of the um, notice period, which is regulated by the laws. So, yeah, yeah. normally should be uh, not that hard to do. Okay. Um, so then, just to maybe make sure that the, the question has been answered correctly, the question was, if I want to sell the apartment, not if I want to claim self-usage. So that's uh, a different different topic. Oh, if you want to sell the, yes. the property. Um, that can be um, a lot more complicated. Yeah. So I, I think you answered the question, what happens if you want to claim self-usage? Yes. So yeah. if you want, if you afford a tenanted apartment, you want to move in yourself, or your family wants to move in, then of course your question, your answer is correct. But in terms of um, if, if there is a tenanted apartment which I would like to sell, do you have any opportunity to cancel the lease? Um, normally not. That's the, the um, I would say, the legal answer on that. Yeah. Um, now, every individual case is different. Yeah. And also, I would advise to talk with a lawyer uh, in this regard. Uh, but in Germany, it's very um, common thing to sell a property with a tenant inside. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's something that the also... The question is for what price. And of course, with a tenant, you get a much lower price, I think. I think you you have realized otherwise you wouldn't have asked the question here. Mm -hmm. So it's a big it's a big price change. So that's something we have to we have to check in detail. What's happening normally? We always try that the tenant is buying your apartment if if he or she is financially available uh, or has the money the the needs to purchase your apartment. That's step one. If that doesn't work, we try to make the tenant leave by paying him money compensation. So the tenant can leave and maybe move somewhere else, find a different apartment. We find him maybe a different apartment. So all these things uh, we do as well. And uh, so that's basically what happens in real life. Yeah. Um, so then we have a question on the risks. What risks do I have as a future landlord if these, um, uh, if these energy costs are so high and they're moving up and up? What, what, what do you recommend? Well, the main risk is that the landlord is stuck with his costs, meaning that the tenant, uh, it may be difficult for the tenant to, um, to pay for these costs. The landlord is uh, either way obliged to pay for them. And if the tenant cannot pay the, for, for the cost, then there is, uh, there is a problem. Our suggestion uh, for that is to sit down, talk with the tenant, try to find a solution, maybe uh, propose a um, uh, um so paying in, in installments. Yeah. Um, we're here uh, to assist you with that. We already uh, informed the tenants about the situation, about the rising costs. We urge them to voluntarily um, pay more monthly to avoid any 
uh, high bug payments next year. Most of them, I would say, reacted pretty well on that and they, uh, they did that already. Mm -hmm. So they're paying a bit more just to avoid this thing. Um, main suggestion, try to find a solution along with the tenant. They're not the, the enemies there. So yeah, we're there and try to, to, to help uh, both parties yeah. to overcome this. So a question from a, a tenant, I cannot find a property to rent. How can I do this? What do you advise? Uh, be patient, uh, send as many um, inquiries as possible, uh, prepare the document and the application as um, th the best way we you can, yeah. uh, leave it simple, facts that um, give the, um, uh, a good picture of, uh, of for the application and, and um, uh, and on your situation, and at some point you will have um, good news. Fantastic. Yeah, I think in terms of the paperwork, be aware of that you need to uh, make sure that you have uh, the confirmation from your current landlord, that there are no outstanding debts, um, that you have a good job, that the income is clear, the application you have to respond very fast, you know, and I think that's important. And register on different portals, register on different agency websites, letting and management agencies, and that, you know, then you can find a, then a property. And if you don't find one in Berlin, you might ask your employer or, you know, go uh, in a different city or go close to Berlin where you have good commuting access. I think in Germany is a very good public transport. So there are other cities close to Berlin where you can commute and maybe you can work part, part from home as well. Um, yeah, and other than that, if you don't find an apartment to rent, it might be a good time considering to buy. I know it's very expensive. However, um, uh, yeah, I think that's something we should watch out for. Um, so we have a question here regarding the Berliner Mietpreisbremse um, or the German Mietpreisbremse, which, which is being reflected in Berlin. Maybe just a quick word. Mietpreisbremse is the rent, uh, the rent cap in Berlin. Uh, the rents are capped in general. Yeah. And maybe you can explain that a little bit. Yeah, the rents are uh, in general regulated, especially for the older buildings yeah. um, from the state. There is a certain amount per square meter that uh, the landlord can get as rent. Uh, that depends on too many things. I think I don't think that's the topic today, but yeah, um, we can give individual advice uh, to anyone who uh, who has questions on that. Mm. Um, there is this regulation. It was in twenty twenty one introduced not introduced, revised, mm -hmm. sorry. And you can find further information in the website of the city of Berlin for that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So also if, if you need a lawyer, um, we have different uh, lawyers we would recommend to you and uh, definitely need some legal advice. Like I've said, um, Janis is not a lawyer, I'm not a lawyer. We just can see what happens in practic in practical life. Um, so that's something you should check. Um, then of course we have a question here. Uh, in the in the cause of rising energy costs and rising interest rates, do you think that p property prices um, will go down in 2023? Yes, they will go down in general. However, um, I mean, if interest is up, prices cannot stay up. It's very simple because buyers simply cannot afford to buy if they can't get a loan. And most of the buyers are getting a loan. So that means most of the buyers are being priced out of the market. However, be aware of there are certain uh, kinds of apartments, different locations, I mean, prime location apartments or luxury apartments usually have a um, small market anyway. And people in that area, uh, because it's expensive, they usually have the funds without the finance to purchase. And then we have the other side of the market, which is the entry market. Uh, everything below 250,000, 300,000. Yeah, this is also booking, even with uh, high interest rates and with high energy costs, of course, because that's that these prices are there for uh, first-time buyers and then you have the middle market to 500,000 to 1 million euros and this this in this market we can see already that uh, that the market is getting smaller and smaller and this is a market that is a little bit under pressure and uh, but also there please be aware of if there is a great apartment in a good area the prices will not drop by 20 percent because the demand is so big that there is always someone who gets a mortgage at the moment uh, but of course the days on market are staying uh, getting more and more so we as brokers have to work more and uh, of course we will think uh, we believe that there will be a market correction next year we already can see that the market prices are falling since summer this year yeah if you need further details please uh, watch our youtube channel and contact us uh, 
directly to get a proper valuation. Um, yeah, we have the so-called um, tenancy agreements uh, which terminate every six months, every 12 months, Yanis. What's what's going on there? Is there any change at the You're moment? talking about the limited tenancy yes. agreements. So that's a very complicated matter also. Um, so in principle, uh, limited agreements in Germany are, um, I wouldn't say are not legal, but um, are complicated. Uh, the standard uh, rental agreement is the unlimited one, and that is 100% uh, legal. Of course, there are exceptions. Uh, that depends uh, on... Uh, so what, what the landlord can do there depends on too many things, on his uh, property, on his plan for the property. Um, I cannot give you a, set, uh, a straightforward answer right now. We need to see its individual um, case differently. Yeah. So if anyone needs uh, advice on that, feel free to contact us. We will be more than happy to. Yeah. to so and you. just for you to be aware of, if this is the first time you're considering to buy in Germany, it, that there is legally no option for you to make a, a limited uh, contract, legal contract with a yeah. tenant. This is basically the foundation we're working on. If you do so, if you make a limited contract, it is always important that the tenant expresses his or her, her interest to have a limited contract. So the tenant has to approach you to say, I want a contract that's terminating in six months and 12 months time because I have a certain reason. I'm going back home. I'm yeah. having an exchange here, etc. So this is where we are, legally speaking. And of course, there are different exceptions, etc. But that needs to be, you know, checked in detail. Yes, exactly. Is this correct, Janis? Mm. Yeah. Okay. So um, then we have... Um, the uh, next question is, uh, is it better to buy or to rent at the moment in the market um, because prices are falling? Um, well, the, the, the answer to that question is very simple. If renting is more expensive than buying, uh, then of course it's better to buy. Very simple. And that's also the bottom for you to be aware of. Don't think that prices will fall and fall and fall. No, the bottom line is where the rents are on the same level than the purchase price is in terms of monthly uh, repayments for of the loan, including uh, the interest rates. And please be aware of mathematically, it's important that the interest rates are and the, 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 the rent you're paying, the net rent you're paying for the apartment is equal or the net rent is higher than the interest rate. This is where the bottom is for you as, a, as someone who wants to rent or want to buy. That's where the bottom is. So this is, um, yeah, every apartment has different rental income, different purchase price, of course. So that's for you just to be aware of. It's a rule of thumb. Uh, at the moment, to borrow 100,000 euros from a German bank is around 500 euros a month, uh, including repayment of the mortgage. And yeah, if you have 1,000 euros a month on budget, then you can borrow up to 200,000 euros in order to buy an apartment. Um, yeah, there are different uh, uh, YouTube channels here on our website. You can follow, sorry, uh, on our website, you can follow our YouTube channel and there are different videos, of course, and there we cover the different topics, including what do I get for 250,000 euros or less, and uh, how do I find a property to buy. Actually, uh, to find a property to buy is easier than to find property to rent at it the moment. It seems so at the yeah. moment, yeah. It seems so at the moment, so maybe that's something you want to watch out for. Um, so we have a question here of modernization, and the, the, the federal court in Germany on the 11th of November 2020 decided on the, uh, the modernization cost and how much you can uh, pass on to the tenant. And so, Janis, maybe you can give us some insight here. Yeah, um, so a, a landlord may decide to uh, modernize the property um, to make it more energy sufficient. The cost for that can be uh, forwarded to the tenants. Um, so that's more or less up to eight percent per annum that can be forwarded to to uh, to the rent the rent that the tenants are paying uh, but then again that's the general rule we have to see uh, the exact property to see the exact cost and how we can calculate exactly how much and what kind of costs can be forwarded mm -hmm. um, in this kind this these cases we also we always uh, suggest to talk with uh, uh, an, an expert on on the energy sector. He can give more 
uh, specific advice on how this can be done, the exact calculations, and uh, he can oversee the whole process for that. Yeah. So, and uh, just as a rule of thumb, uh, legally speaking, um, you have 8% of the cost of modernization you can pass on per year to your tenants. Um, and however, you have to make sure that they're real modernizations. You know, can they say, okay, I'm going to fix the, the shower, I'm going to fix the bathroom or do a new kitchen. This is not modernization costs. So please be aware of in Germany, everything's regulated, yeah? has pro and cons to it. Um, so you can plan what's happening. However, you have to uh, stick to, to, to the, the rules. Plan. Yeah, <laughs> to, to the, the plan. Yeah. And you also need a um, certified energy uh, consultant. And uh, uh, this person I can uh, recommend to you, Daniel Burgess. He's our partner. Black Label Development, he's a, he's a chartered surveyor and also an engineer and he's an energy consultant and he can check this for you. So if you make a plan, you have to communicate the plan to the tenant, you have to tell them well in advance, then you have to you do the work and during the work you need an energy consultant to check that what the plan is has been executed and then at the end you need a certificate and then you can pass the cost on to the tenant and of course the tenant needs to see all the costs you have actually paid, what's in the budget, what's planned. So this is uh, very important if you uh, want to renovate a multifamily home and want to rent it out and want to pass on the, the uh, modernization costs, the energy costs, please, this is something you need. Definitely energy consultant, plus you need a lawyer and you need a property management company to manage the whole thing. Uh, then the next question is, um, do, as, a, as, a, as a landlord, my tenant, he wants to sublet the apartment or a room. Um, yeah, do I have to accept this as a landlord? And um, how, how much can I charge extra for this? Um, this is normally uh, written into the rental agreement and it is regulated by that. So uh, the tenant can ask for a sub sublet if the landlord uh, agrees with that. There is a process we have uh, to oversee that and then in this case you as a landlord get to see uh, the sublet uh, contract. Um, you can add uh, up to 25% of the sublet rent that the your tenant basically receiving to, your, um, uh, to the rent that your tenant is paying to you. Um, but this is also a legal matter, so we will have to see each individual case differently. And um, it is basically under um, an arrangement between the landlord and the tenant. Mm. Okay, so just for you to be aware of, uh, uh, it's, it sounds a bit strange, but if the tenant comes to you and say, hey, I need to sublet one room because I have a financial problem, you have to accept that, you cannot say no. And also in yeah. terms of, um, well, according to German law, um, and also in terms of uh, the extra you get for it, it's 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 very small extra as a landlord you would you would get for it. Don't don't think you can double the rent. No, so no. this won't happen. Um, so that again, there are certain rules, and please feel free to contact us if you have a certain case, and then we check that for you, of course. Or if you cannot check it, we will advise you to the right um, lawyer. Um, then in Germany, we have the so-called inflation rental contracts. As I'm sure you're aware of, we had a crazy inflation this year in Germany, and it doesn't look it's going down anytime soon. Well, we never know, but that's what's happening at the moment. So we have certain inflation contracts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, is there any regulation on that you're aware of, Janis? Uh, at the moment, not really. Yeah. These kind of contracts exist. Mainly, they are more uh, commercial contracts that are regulated by the uh, inflation mm. rate. Uh, for apartments, we do not see that uh, that often, um, but they exist also. And um, we just need to follow what uh, the inflation says and what the contract basically uh, dictates there. Okay. So we have another question here um, on the on the on the general interest of the property market and the tenancy situation and how much rent are being paid and what's happening to the purchase prices. So I think the rents we covered today already a little bit. Mm -hmm. And if, if again, if you have a concrete question, please ask that here in our chat. And um, in terms of the market price, um, I think we have, a, we have written a report on our website. You can check that on blacklabelproperties.com. There is a current market report under the news section. Uh, we have now the 15th of November, right? Yes. Yep. 
So that report is three weeks old. I think it's quite useful for you to have a look at that. End of October, we have published that. And the next uh, show will be with my colleague Andreas Müller. He's a surveyor and he does all the um, valuations here at Stake Table. And uh, he will give you some market insight what's happened this year in terms of market prices. And the next uh, real estate talk will be uh, next month in December. I think that's something you might want to see. So we have another question in terms of, um, of purchasing. Uh, is it, does it make sense in selling to buy now? Does it make sense to wait until next year or the year after? Of course, no one really knows what's happening. It, I'm pretty sure that uh, a good indication is that uh, all indicators are positive to buy, especially we've already seen that renting is expensive and it's getting more and more expensive. And if you rent a place every, t every month, the money is gone. And if you buy a place, you pay off the property with a portion of that uh, money. So it's always better to buy than to rent, um, uh, assuming you can afford it, of course, because then you have a fixed, uh, fixed monthly payment and the rents are going up every year. And um, so that's something which I think is pretty obvious. And then we have a big question in terms of um, property prices going down, how much they will go down. I think we covered that already today, mm -hmm. a little bit when the bottom line has been achieved. Um, yeah, then we have a question regarding uh, selling. Uh, if you have bought 10 years ago, eight years ago, you minimum have doubled the money since then or tripled it. If you have bought the right apartment at the right time, going down by 10%, 20%, even 30% is compared to the price of 2021, it still means you have made 100% profit, 200% profit. So I don't think there should be a problem. And uh, then tax-wise, of course, please speak to a tax advisor to make sure you're not paying any rental, uh, sorry, any, any uh, profit tax here in Germany or personal income tax when you sell your German property. That's something a lawyer or tax advisor can check for you. And then we have a question regarding the outskirts of Berlin. Mm -hmm. I think that's something since COVID we have seen it's going up and up. So yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, the past two years were also quite interesting. We saw a lot of people moving out of Berlin, trying to find a better um, way of life, so to speak, better rents. Uh, home office is right now very popular and I think it's, uh, it is here and it will stay. So we have a lot of inquiries for uh, properties outside of Berlin, not very far away, but still outside. Uh, commute is pretty easy also. So I think that these markets are also very, uh, so very, very high potential. Yeah, I fully agree. Couldn't agree more. And then there's a question regarding uh, the refurbishment of uh, apartments to bring them up to the modern energy standards. Um, I think I've said that already. Speak please to our colleague Daniel de Burgess. He is the energy consultant here on the team. Then I have a question regarding a commercial tenant. Should a landlord compensate the tenant for increasing electricity and heating costs? Dennis, what I is your response? I'm not very sure uh, about this question, what, what exactly yeah. uh, it means, but commercial uh, contracts are not regulated as as the, uh, the the contracts for an apartment for example which means that uh, the landlord and the tenant uh, can have a um, an arrangement there this arrangement can be anything normally uh, heating costs electricity costs are being bared by the tenant directly so there is no um, uh, uh, involvement of the landlord to this cost so I don't think that there is anything to compensate to the tenant. The tenant just need to be, um, how to put it, not very, he need to be aware of his consumption yeah. and that's how he yeah. has not. The, it also, of course, depends on the contract you've made with the tenant, what exactly has been written in the contract. But commercial tenants usually have no real protection. The residential tenants do have a lot of protection. Mm -hmm. I think you, you figured that already by watching our real estate talk today, but I'm sure if you go on Jana's website, Black Label Property Management, or go on blacklabelproperty.com, you'll see that there are certain rules and restrictions. However, you cannot increase the, the net rent so much if the warm rent, as we say, so the side cost of utilities are going up through the roof, then of course, you cannot go up with your net rent at the same time, because otherwise you will be completely priced out of the market. So that's something that's an uh, effect that hits you, but not straight away. You don't have to compensate, but it limits your ability to increase the rent. Next question, best way to buy property to get the rent to match the mortgage monthly installments? Fantastic question. Thank you for that. Um, it depends on the rental contract. 
to the residential or commercial apartment, of course, the rental contract, uh, we need to check if we have an opportunity to increase the rents according to the, um, uh, the Berliner Mietspiegel, so the, it's the average rent in Berlin. If it's an old apartment, new apartment, I think you covered that already today, Janis. Yeah, if it's an old apartment, if it's a, a new apartment, it's uh, quite easy. You as a landlord uh, are free to, um, to ask for whatever rent you want to. Of course, the market regulates itself and uh, we have the, the rent prices. So you, if you're buying right now uh, a new build property, you can uh, have um, um, an estimation on how much the rent will be, so you can calculate whether uh, this is in accordance to your mortgage payments. If you are uh, considering on buying uh, an already tenanted apartment, then you have to see uh, from the documents that you will receive from, from the buyer whether you can uh, increase the rent and for how much these are regulated so you can again calculate exactly if yeah. um, these go in accordance to to the to the price that you are paying and to the mortgage uh, payments okay we have two more questions and um, so you're not only operating Janis in Berlin in Brandenburg you also operate in Leipzig so you manage a couple of apartments and houses there so how is the market in Leipzig, the rental market? I would say it's pretty stark. Uh, it's pretty, uh, <laughs> sorry, it's pretty strong. Um, I think uh, Leipzig, the past few years, uh, increased. The market has increased and uh, went pretty strong right after Berlin. Um, it's true we're we are um, managing a couple of properties there, a couple of buildings. Um, it is a very um, the potential in, in Leipzig is really, really high and we see a lot more um, buildings to be renovated there, new builds also there, uh, inquiries and, and a, lot of, a lot of people are looking for apartments right now in Leipzig. Yeah. Okay, then uh, last but not least, the, the three points you would uh, give landlords um, to, to, to be aware of after this real estate talk, what they, what they should uh, watch out for, the main three points. Um, get well informed, know the market, what, what, is ca what uh, you, you can expect and um, take advice from uh, lawyers and um, uh, um, so tax advisors so that you have the proper information to make up your mind and, and have your decisions on, on how to maximize your profits. Yeah. And I think uh, from my side, um, which is very important, is you should compare. And it's very difficult in Berlin to compare properties because um, you have a tenanted apartment, you have a vacant apartment, you have a refurbishment, you have another refurbishment apartment. So the broker in Germany is very, very important for you as an investor or someone who is entering the market the first time. And of course, check your finance options, uh, what's really the mortgage, the interest payment, how long you can fix that interest payment. It usually we work with the long period uh, in Germany, not with variable rates. We have a fixed term rates. So all of these things are very important for you as an investor. And with the rental market, um, I think we have a very strong rental market in Germany, especially in the big cities in Berlin, especially. And I think on the rental market, the rents are being, you know, they will go up in the future because there are less and less people who can buy as long as they have high interest rates. And um, so you have a very good investment case. And as an international investor, you at the moment have a big advantage that a lot of Germans cannot get a mortgage because they need a high deposit. And you as an international investor are used to get 30%, 40% uh, deposit. So you're used to that because in the past your international clients have done so before. So you can negotiate the price now if it's an old apartment, if the rent is very low, which is the first time in a very long time an investor or per a client here, a buyer, can negotiate the price. So this is fantastic for you and I think that's really great and like I've said to Janis or Janis just said to you, it's important that you um, get well informed about the rental market because it's very regulated in Germany and maybe very strange for you as an international client and I think that's very important yeah. to start collecting the right information. That's why we're doing these real estate talks and uh, I really appreciate that uh, you have joined us today and uh, please feel free to contact Janis on his website, Black Label Property Management. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, please feel, please feel free to contact me as well on blacklevelproperty.com. And uh, yeah, join our YouTube channel. And um, yeah, if there's any question, 
um, happy to help you guys and uh, thank you for watching tonight. Janis, thank you for spending your time tonight. Thank you for having me. I hope that uh, we gave some info and yeah, we'll be here for you. Thank you.